Friends, thanks for watching. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna de deconstruct uh, Ennio Morricone's Gabriel's Oboe uh, music track. Uh, I will put you through my workflow. Uh, hope you gain some useful experience, knowledge, and will implement it into your works. Uh, so, uh, conceptually, if you want to write nice music you have to learn from those who do it uh, at best that they can from the professionals uh, what's an idea to use proper words ideas and um, to generate thoughts and sentences you have to read books from books you take your ideas from books you take your knowledge from books it takes <laughs> words to speak uh, with people so in order to write nice music you have to learn from those who do it uh, who who does it good and in my opinion uh, making covers uh, to soundtracks or music you like it's something like reading a nice book uh, eventually you will end up um, writing your own book your own story and in the context of music production uh, you'll be able to produce nice uh, striking vivid uh, sound I hope so so uh, uh, in this track uh, I started from uh, the basics I put the reference track into my project and try to uh, to manage all the sounds, all the instruments as they were in the original track. So um, my first step was to um, listen to original track and uh, and then and uh, I started from the easiest part I can't hear. Uh, it was um, a boy instrument so here it is I turn on my plugin, uh, Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds, took a boy. I would say uh, this instrument uh, is not quite as good as the um, live instrument. Of course it has its shape, its texture, but um, it doesn't have all textures of sound textures of the original instrument. Uh, I, I understand that during uh, sound production of a music library you, you lose some qualities of an instrument and you have to face it during your, um, uh, during your uh, music production so uh, next step was um, I tried to, um, to write um, clavichord and harpsichord as it were sounded in the original music track it's kind of on the background uh, on the back uh, background of a uh, music track so I put of I put a lot of um, reverb and delay and actually this is a result some heavenly sound I guess <laughs> Third instrument was um, drum section, um, particularly uh, timpanis.
it's kind of on the ground too like uh, the harpsichord uh, but it, 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 it shouldn't be so uh, epic uh, it should add texture so I tried to manage it and hope I achieved my results man come on Kisa Okay, after the timpani track, the, the string section started, and that's what took me two weeks to manage. Uh, I took uh, sheet music, uh, sc I mean script music, and it didn't uh, went well, so um, I started from the low section of strings from cellos and bass uh, because I could hear it vividly this is bass and cello next part was viola mm. you don't hear it in the original uh, music track as vividly as you would like uh, and actually this is quite uh, in every symphonic um, track uh, viola is the kind of instrument it's like the between the uh, cellos and the violins and it's quite hard to um, to understand by by ear where is it situated uh, and where is it playing The last part was uh, uh, violin section, first and second violins. Uh, personally, I love, I love this part. I think uh, my my whole idea, uh, listening to soundtracks and symphonic music, uh, you always have to to have this uh, high 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 end uh, instruments. They they are very emotionally charged. Every sound of high high end. I mean, the high end of spectrum of. A sound spectrum instruments are, are very emotionally uh, charged they mm, influence uh, I don't know what what it is uh, maybe this is, uh, there is a scientific explanation to that but uh, high-end sounds uh, high sounds are very emotionally charged and they influence your mm, your emotion and feelings very, uh, I think, very, very uh, extensively. Okay, well, this is what this whole process was the first part. Uh, you try to implement every instrument, uh, you try to write every track as best as you can, and to manage its sound as best as you can. 
as it implemented in the original track. So, next part was I turn on uh, my pink noise track, which is, sounds like this. This is just a noise. Uh, this is just. Uh, this is a reference track you don't hear it in the music cover because I use it for my mastering. So I put it on the minus 15 dB and then uh, put ev take every instrument and try to manage each its sound uh, to sound vividly and uh, clearly. So it looks like this. try to manage the volume of a track uh, to the point where you can hear the instrument. Okay, this is started to be very annoying. Okay, then um, after managing uh, every volume on every track to the reference uh, pink noise sound on minus 15 dB uh, you uh, I, I went to the part where where I adjust in my EQ on every track so on the master track I put everything in mono uh, turn on my pink noise generator and manage uh, every track uh, every track uh, EQ um, to the part uh, where I where I uh, satisfied by the sound I, I take uh, every annoying uh, sound spectrum sequences out from my music track, from each track. And this is are my building blocks. Uh, after my um, third step of managing uh, EQ on each of the tracks. I come back on a master track, um, steal everything in mono, but, uh, but I, don't, I don't think so. So, ah, uh -huh, okay. I turn down um, mono mode and turn on my mastering preset and started to managing all the tracks uh, started managing uh, all tracks EQ in I hope you can hear the difference As the last part, I uh, add in some noise, uh, noise sounds, a noise generator uh, to hold the tracks, the master track. Uh, add some compression, just slight compression, just a little bit. You can see that just small amount of compression. 
and a limiter to uh, take all the sounds, all the tracks up uh, to a maximum, uh, to a 0 dB, close to 0 dB. Uh, I'm not trying to destruct my track, it still needs to be a uh, uh, dynamic range, flowing, uh, flowing dynamic range, because your track ha has to breathe. If it's not electronic or some other stuff, is it if it's uh, orchestra theme or orchestra soundtrack, it has to breathe. So don't put a lot of compression and don't put a lot of limiter or gaining volume gaining uh, plugins onto your track. Okay, this was my whole working process. I hope you enjoyed this video, took something useful to you, and hope you will implement it into your uh, music covers or your tracks. I would like to see the results. If you want, you can share it in the comments uh, under the video. I will gonna check it and put my comment on your works. Okay, thanks. Thanks for your attention. Bye, see ya.